Assalamu alaikum aziz okuçlar. IELTS boyunca sorularını görüştü devam etmemiz ve speaking mazulardan part 2'den invention mazusu yapmamız ve mazuyumuz demek describe an, an invention that changed the world for the better. Yani bir invention hakkında yapışırsak gerek ki yani ıhtıra, ben şu ıhtıra dünyanın yaş tamamı özgürtürdü. Degen savol. What it is, how it changed the world, how popular it is. Degen savollar, pointlar gibi cevap vereceğiz ki Güden bir yaş savol, kızık savol ve benim için asan cevap verirse böyle degen savol çünkü Güden bir köp narsalar hakkında yapışırsa böyle de bu hakkında ve her bir insanın özgü yarışı bir fikri bulsa gerek. Yani umumi kandedir fikirler. Yani bu arada mesela için kimdir telefon ne için mümkün, kimdir internet ne için mümkün ya ki çünkü hoşlaş bir maşina ne için mümkün. Ben çünkü hoşlaş bir cevaplar, umumi cevaplar da benim olayla ayıtıp ötse böyle de buna kadar kıyın savağılı emez. Ve bana şu mazuda demeyim ben iki dakika gəbir veririz ki hareket edin hemen hoş bu videoda. So the first thing that came to my mind when it comes to the invention that has actually changed the world is, is internet. And if you think about internet, it has changed the way we communicate, the way we do business, the way we uh, study and many, many other aspects of our lives have been affected by the internet. And uh, there are so many things to talk about. But of course, uh, I just want to focus on one aspect which is related to education because my job as a teacher is directly related to this uh, aspect. Uh, and if you think about internet and education, it has uh, created more opportunities for people coming from average and low income families. Uh, in the past, education was a luxury item uh, which could only be afforded by the wealthy people. You had to cover the tuition fees, living expenses, travel expenses, so it was something that could be done only by the rich. Now with the help of internet, uh, people from middle income families or low income families can study and they can do it online and they don't have to travel to foreign countries, they don't have to go abroad uh, and they don't have to pay uh, expensive tuition fees. Uh, you know, most of the things that you will need uh, in the workplace can now actually be uh, learned for free either on YouTube for example or uh, for a very small uh, charge uh, at special online courses. So from the perspective of students, it has created more opportunities. Now talking from my own perspective as an educator, it has, it has helped me to reach wider audience. Now before the introduction of the internet, I mean I just used to teach offline lessons and my audience was very limited. I could only teach uh, students from the local area. But now once I have started uploading my uh, videos on YouTube, now I can teach uh, students from all around the world. I have so many uh, f subscribers in my YouTube channel. My videos have become really popular and ha they have been viewed more than 150,000 times. It gives me really great, great uh, pleasure and sense of achievement. And I have, I run online courses as well. And uh, my online courses are attended by students from all around Uzbekistan. It's a great pleasure to work with them. So, uh, internet has really revolutionized the way we teach, the way we study, has brought many, many positive things, uh, especially in education uh, sphere. Okay, that's it. Uh, yeah, I could go on talking about this topic for a long time, but and I tried to squeeze it in into two minutes, but it was really difficult, uh, uh, a little bit more than two minutes, but uh, it was worth it, I think. Yeah, okay. So now it's time to move on to part three questions. Okay, demek part 3 savolları ham juda ham qiziq savollar bor ekan, shularni ham bir ko'rib chiqamiz. Birinchi savolimiz, do you think that AI will replace human teachers? AI degani artificial intelligence, sun'iy intellekt, sun'iy intellekt o'qituvchilarning o'rnini bosa oladimi, ya'ni keyinchalik o'rnini bo'shatib qo'yadimi AI on AI ga? Uh, well, to be honest, I don't think that teachers will ever be replaced by AI. No matter how smart AI will get, it will never be as smart as teachers. It's not just about intellectual capacity of the AI. Of course, you know, teachers, human teachers cannot compete with AI in terms of memory, in terms of uh, solving some maybe problems, but you know, the teaching is not just about, uh, you know, these uh, numbers or data or uh, the capacity to remember or to analyze uh, certain data. It's, it's more about uh, giving this inspiration, motivation. There are many other things that are not related, directly related to uh, the subject that is being taught. So uh, I think uh, AI will never be able to compete with uh, human teachers because as I said, there are so many other aspects that make teachers far better than AI. What invention do you hope to have? Do you hope to have in? Uh, do you hope to have in 20 years? Uh, well, 
In 20 years, I'm hoping to be flying in a, a flying cars, uh, in drones maybe, because uh, the roads are getting congested and it's taking a long time to get to work. So probably, hopefully, in 20 years, we'll be flying, uh, and uh, this is going. This traffic jam problem will be solved, uh, and maybe some other inventions as well. Maybe like uh, the rockets that uh, will enable us to fly to other planets, uh, and maybe we can go on for vacation to those places. Uh, okay, what are the disadvantages and disadvantages of online courses? Now, there are many advantages of online courses uh, if you are not able to physically attend uh, that place, you're far away from the uh, place that uh, the lesson is being held, it's a great chance. So I have, I run my online courses and I have students who study uh, from the other end of the uh, Uzbekistan, which is quite far away, and they wouldn't be able to physically attend my lessons. So it gives a chance to attend these uh, lessons, even though, even if you are too far away from the uh, place that actually the lesson is being held. Uh, and this is one advantage. Of course, uh, the, the disadvantage is that you don't have this face-to-face uh, -face, uh, real communication. Uh, and it can, I think you know, in-person communication can never be replaced, or, uh, no matter how hard you try to do it in the uh, online platforms. Uh, but still, uh, you know, there's so many other things like um, things that you miss out when you try to talk to someone on, online. So. Uh, and uh, for example, as a teacher, I can give you one uh, specific example. When you uh, have online lessons, you cannot uh, use the jokes that you use in the offline lessons because uh, it's very difficult to make people engaged. Uh, but I, I, you know, I'm kind of person who uses jokes a lot in my offline lessons and people feel very much engaged in the lesson. But it's really difficult to do it in the online lessons because uh, there's a time lag between you, uh, the time that you speak and the re reaction time. So, so, so many intricate details that are, cannot be replicated uh, in the online lessons. Uh, and next question, how can technology be used in the classroom? Well, technology, uh, I think te technology must be used and there's, you know, uh, in, in, in the classroom because uh, we have so many uh, opportunities to use it in the classroom. Personally, I use internet a lot. I have a special uh, monitor that you can see at the back on the wall, uh, and I don't use any regular, uh, you know, whiteboard or blackboard. And I use this uh, smart uh, screen, and I use internet resources a lot. I uh, we often watch uh, videos from YouTube related to the topic, so uh, it helps us uh, to find the most recent information and to present it to students and this makes uh, learning process much more interesting and also updates students with the uh, most recent information. So it's very important to use uh, technology, especially internet and like smart screens or if you have a projector uh, in the classroom. And next one, what electrical appliances do people in your country have at home? Now we have uh, many electrical appliances. I think most of the people uh, have uh, refrigerators. Uh, some have uh, micro ovens. Uh, we also have, um, I think, uh, iron, yeah, a vacuum cleaner. Uh, and the people who can afford to buy, they probably have Wi-Fi uh, system as well. Uh, it's not really expensive. Uh, I think many people nowadays have Wi-Fi, uh, you know, these routers to enable them to connect to the internet. So there's things, these are the things that electrical appliances that we use at home. Uh, okay, and what household appliances make us lazy? Now, uh, there are a few things, uh, appliances that make us uh, lazy, maybe microwave oven, if you think about, uh, you just can just bring something from a uh, supermarket and uh, have it, uh, you know, cooked in like two or three minutes in the microwave oven. And this makes us really, uh, lazy because you, you would be lazy to prepare food for yourself. Um, yeah, uh, I think this is a very good example. And do you think modern technology makes people lazier? Uh, well, yes, I think yeah, it makes them uh, lazier because if you think about uh, past, uh, in the past people would go out more often uh, to meet some people, but now they don't have to meet them. Um, but the people in person because they can chat on the internet or in the social network. So, and then instead of going to cinema, for example, or to the park, they can watch YouTube videos, they can entertain themselves without leaving their room. So 
uh, actually makes us a lot, uh, very much uh, lazier than uh, in the past. Now, what do you think have been uh, what, what do you think have been some of the most important inventions in the past 100 years or so? Yeah, in, if you think about in uh, the past 100 years, uh, definitely the first one that comes to my mind is the internet. Uh, another one is uh, cars. Uh, well, yeah, internet, cars, most important inventions, and maybe space travel as well. Uh, so, uh, and if you think about space travel, uh, most of the you know things that we have that we use, for example, the smartphones that we use, actually come as a byproduct of space travel of the. Uh, research done being into space travel, so it's definitely something that must be included in the list. Of course, smartphone, computers, uh, you know, most of the things are related to technology, and I think this has been the century of technology, technological advancement, and has actually changed uh, people's lives a lot. Now, do you think it's good that new inventions are appearing so often? Uh, well, uh, I don't think so, because uh, when, when, when you buy a new smartphone and after two or three months a new smartphone appears again, a new, a new version, this makes uh, you want to buy uh, the new version uh, as well, because you want to get these benefits and you don't want to be, uh, you know, get behind other peers uh, who, who, who have this phone. Actually, uh, creates more pollution, because to produce a new smartphone, they will have to use resources. Uh, and I think this is something that is really negative. And if you think about you know, you know, the same example with smartphone, the new version and uh, the old version and the new version are very, very similar. There's just few changes uh, that you would probably uh, not use. And so you would be fine using the old version of your phone, but because of the uh, impact of advertisement and peer pressure, uh, you, you will want to buy this. Uh, new version and this actually uh, increases your uh, carbon footprint so the damage that you make to the environment uh, so I think uh, there's lots of uh, pollution happening because of uh, companies trying to compete with each other uh, and offering a wide range of products and newer versions and, uh, and this all boils down to consumerism and it's a, it's a, it's a big topic of course but uh, overall it's something that is really negative for the environment and for the people as well. Now, uh, do you think there will be any negative effects resulting from future technology? Uh, well, there might be some negative effects. Uh, now, uh, there's a fear that many jobs will be replaced. Uh, for example, if you think about taxi drivers now, uh, the, you know, in the future we'll probably have autonomous cars and we'll probably, many of the uh, drivers uh, will probably find themselves in difficult situation because they, they're going to lose their jobs and they'll have to reskill themselves or upskill themselves uh, to increase their chances of getting a different job. So they will have to change their job a lot. So it's going to be a transformative uh, phase for um, millions of people uh, and they'll have to learn some new skills to be able to keep up with pace with uh, uh, advancements in technology. So there might be, of course, uh, some uh, negative effects and uh, another negative effect would be related to our health as we are spending a lot more time uh, using our smartphones and on the internet uh, we are developing many problems uh, uh, like for example obesity or uh, depression uh, so this kind of problems will probably uh, get even worse in the future as we uh, become even more and more reliant on computers and phones and social networks. So these are the things that we need to consider in the future. Okay, thank you for your attention. Manushlar da imbaratı da değil mi? İnvençlerin sağırlarına hem azıcık cevap verip çıktık. Thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Take care.